many of us, since the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti was announced on May 18th, have eagerly been waiting its launch, not to buy it, but to watch the world explode. We've known that this card is going to be doomed on arrival for quite a while now, and one piece of damning evidence was that Nvidia didn't want to send out review samples to GPU reviewers because it seems like they wanted to hide this product launch. Well, it sucks to say, at least for now, is it kinda has worked. This launch has gone pretty quiet. Well, that was until one brave soul stepped up and took the plunge. Steve from Hardware Unboxed, may your sacrifice never be forgotten. <laughs> so yeah, when I do reference numbers for the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte, it will most likely be from Hardware Unboxed. But why is the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti from Nvidia so bad? For that, we're gonna need to take a brief history lesson. So buckle up and grab your prescription strength Tylenol as you try to wrap your head around Nvidia's logic to marketing this product. On May 28th, 2023, the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte graphics card launch, which is the little brother basically to the 16 gigabyte one that just launched. Somehow, it managed to actually lose in some cases to the 3060 Ti that it was supposed to be replacing. But to add on to the 4060 Ti being so trash, this card was only targeted at 1080p. Because technically, yes, according to the Steam hardware survey, 1080p is the most popular resolution. But as you can see, it's going down. And by the fact that 1440p monitors, very high quality ones, aren't that expensive anymore. So I guess Nvidia thought they were smart and they were like, hey, we're just gonna subtly uh, make the 60 Ti class and now target 1080p instead of 1440p, shift the goalposts and nobody will notice. But Nvidia, we have ascended. We can, we can see through your games now. And at the time, we also saw that Nvidia thought they were funny putting eight gigabytes of VRAM in a $400 graphics card. Only $60 more and you could get a PS5 with a game. That's also probably why they're targeting 1080p and not 1440p because they wanna cheap out on us and not give us a little bit more VRAM. And this is an issue mainly because you are buying this graphics card brand new right now. It's supposed to last for years and years. And a lot of brand new games that are releasing right now are starting to push that eight gigabyte VRAM buffer even at 1080p. And this problem of games using a lot of VRAM is probably only going to get worse into the future because new consoles like the PS5 and Xbox Series X have access to about 12 gigabytes of VRAM. So developers are just going to make games for that and hope that PC hardware can keep up. As Steve said from Gamers Nexus, is a waste of sand. And I could not say it better myself. All of this, and I ain't even talked about the 16 gigabyte version yet. And for reference, spec for spec, the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte and 16 gigabyte are basically the exact same card. This chart is from videocards.com. If you want to check it out, it'll be in the description. From everything from the core count, 4,352, from the clock speed to 2.5 gigahertz, to even the memory bus width are the same, which is surprising when the only difference is the VRAM capacity. So marketing gigabrains over at NVIDIA thought it'd be the most genius and generous thing to fix the VRAM issue that plagues the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte right now. So yay, NVIDIA fixed the VRAM problem on the 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte version. Do you wanna pay another $100 on top of a graphics card that was already poorly priced and positioned in the market? Do you wanna pay an extra $100 just to fix this issue? That's where the 16 gigabyte model falls apart. Because according to Hardware Unboxed here, at 1080p, you only get a 4% performance uplift going to the 16 gigabyte model. And at 1440p, where the extra VRAM is supposed to give you a larger advantage, you're paying 25% more for on average 3% more performance. Nvidia really wants to upsell us to the 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 Ti. 
and that is kind of with good reason because it's probably going to age better as games need more VRAM than the 8GB version. But I don't think this is going to fly in the community. Because when you get down to the 60 class cards from Nvidia, you're talking about selling to the common folk. Like we don't have a ton of disposable income, like $500 to spend on a graphics card. And if we are spending $500 on a graphics card, we're more picky about where our money is going. At $500, this card is competing directly with the 6800 XT. And I'm using the RTX 4070 as basically a stand in here because that's what Hardware Unbox has on their benchmarks. And these perform very similarly. And then the 6800 non-XT, goes for about $450. 6800 XT, that is almost 30% faster than the 4060 Ti. If you wanted to go for less money, it is 16% faster from AMD. These cards also have 16 gigabytes of VRAM. What is hilarious is Nvidia thought they could be the ones to manufacture the VRAM problem that the 4060 Ti is having. Then also be the same ones to sell us the solution to the problem. And this speaks volumes of how messed up the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte really is. And I completely agree with what Hardware Unbox Steve is saying. Of course, the real issue with the 4060 Ti is the price. And that applies to both variants. But $500 for what should be the base configuration RTX 4060 Ti is insane. Realistically, the 4060 Ti should have always had 16 gigabytes of VRAM. That 8 gigabyte one should have never existed. It really only exists to try to upsell us to the 16 gigabyte one that they wanted to launch for more money. But if they couldn't have made the 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 Ti happen at $400 and they had to charge $500 for it, at least maybe they could have gone for 12 gigabytes. Now, obviously, Nvidia is capable of doing this because they launched an RTX 3060 12 gigabyte at an MSRP of $330. We all know the real reason why they didn't put 12 gigabytes of VRAM on this 4060 Ti, even the $400 one, because it would make their $800 4070 Ti with 12 gigabytes of VRAM only look extremely bad in comparison. And if Nvidia was really being honest with us, like given the power draw and the, the relative size of a GPU die and the artificial limitations that they're putting on the VRAM capacity and the 128 bus width, the 4060 Ti was never really a 4060 Ti. And Nvidia is obviously lying to us. This card was always at least a 4050 Ti. If the 8 gigabyte 4050 Ti was actually priced at $250 instead of the insulting $400 Nvidia is trying to rob us with, and if they took the 16 gigabyte version of the 4050 Ti to about $300 to $325, I could see these 4050 Ti's actually being something to get excited about. This would be a similar situation if these cards were priced properly to like how the RTX 3070 was and it was so hype at the $500 price point because it performed about as fast as the 2080 Ti which was like what like a thousand dollar GPU. We could excuse some of the flaws that it also came with like how it only had 8 gigabytes of VRAM compared to the 2080 Ti at 11 gigabytes and obviously that 8 gigabytes of VRAM is starting to bite that card in the ass. Like I wish we could excuse things like the limited VRAM capacity on the 46 Ti and the limited 128 bit bus on these graphics cards. Even the 16 gigabyte one only has 128 bit bus, and these issues could be excused if these cards were more budget focused. They all have 8 gigabytes of VRAM and they all have 128 bit bus. And I don't think that really detracts from the cards a whole lot because they don't cost. A whole lot of money you know you're going to make some compromises as you move down the product stack but these 4060 ti's are 400 and 500 dollars you don't get to make those excuses anymore at those price points and what is so stupid is the 16 gigabyte version of the 4060 ti they had to instead of just putting more memory modules and making it a 256 bit bus instead to clamshell two 
two memory DIMMs on the front of the PCB and on the back of the PCP just so that they could keep this graphics card at 128 bits. It's like Nvidia literally went out of their way just to intentionally cap how good the 4060 Ti 16GB version could be. But Steve did say one thing that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Something I did want to address with this content though was the concern that the 128 bit wide memory bus wouldn't be enough to utilize 16 gigabytes of VRAM. I've seen this comment a lot from viewers over the past few months. I'm not sure where it comes from or what the exact theory is, but I think the belief seems to be that there's simply not enough memory bandwidth to effectively use a 16 gigabyte memory buffer. Basically what Steve said is he thinks that the community believes that we think that that VRAM would be so slow on it that it would be completely useless. I do think Steve is kind of misunderstanding the complaint that the community is having about the 16 gigabyte graphics card on 128 bit bus. And I mean this in the completely like, nicest way possible. Uh, over at Hardware Unbox, they do amazing research and they're very thorough. They make amazing content and I love to reference their content in my videos because it's just that freaking good. That's exactly why I want to get this straight. It's obvious that the 4060 Ti can and will use the extra eight gigabytes of memory to its fullest capacity, okay? I think that's clear. The issue is because of the 128 bit memory bus, its memory only comes in at 288 gigabytes per second, which is a lot slower than you would expect from a 16 gigabyte graphics card. The real reason the slower VRAM sucks is because as you go up in resolution, the GPU will not scale as well. And according to Hardware Unbox's own data, the RX 6800 non-XT only lost 27% when moving from 127 FPS at 1080p to 93 FPS at 1440p. Whereas the 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti loses 31% moving from 116 FPS at 1080p to 80 FPS at 1440p. So it seems pretty clear that the memory bandwidth did affect how the 4060 Ti scaled up to 1440p compared to a GPU that does have faster VRAM. Nvidia was coping pretty hard when they had 128 bit bus on here and they're trying to like frantically explain to the community that all of that bandwidth would be made up by the 32 megabytes of L2 cache. I do have to give Nvidia some credit though. You would think since the 4060 Ti almost has half the memory bandwidth of the 6800 from AMD that it would scale much more poorly than that, but it doesn't scale that bad. But that is exactly why we must stay focused, my brothers and sisters. It's about the kick in the balls that Nvidia is giving us. They say, oh, you get to have the 16 gigabytes of VRAM, but psych, at higher resolutions where 16 gigabytes would have the biggest benefit, you don't get to use that VRAM to its fullest potential. You do not scale as well as you go up in resolution. And if you are already on the ground crying from being kicked, Nvidia goes ahead, hits you with a double whammy, uses the other leg and kicks you again. Because guess what? You're gonna pay $500, $100 premium, this 16 gigabyte GPU that is limited and how much it can even use that VRAM. The 16 gigabyte 4060 Ti is not worth the money. Obviously, the 3060 Ti, its previous generation counterpart, doesn't have as much VRAM. The 3060 Ti nowadays is only going for $340. That makes the 3060 Ti at $340 a much better value compared to either of the 4060 Ti models. And as I mentioned earlier, the 16 gigabyte model of this card had the chutzpah at $500 to compete with the $450 RX 6800 and the $510, which frequently goes down to $500 even, RX 6800 XT, which both of these cards are overall faster in rasterization performance compared to the 4060 Ti, and on top of that, they both have that 16 gigabyte memory capacity. The only justification I really see for the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte one is if in a really niche case, somebody's doing a creative workflow and they have to have Nvidia for whatever they're working on. And on top of that, they need to have a very large amount of VRAM. The 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte is the, the cheapest option from Nvidia that has the highest amount of VRAM. Checks some boxes that somebody might need. 
And on top of that, the other argument to get the 4060 Ti would be that if you really want frame generation or if you really need AV1 encoding, but for $500 to get those features, it doesn't, it doesn't justify the price guys. And that's because if you thought the $400 4060 Ti 8 gigabyte card was a bad deal, well, guess what? I got, I got news for you. The $500 version of that same card is even worse. It's, it is funny to shit on things in the moment and graphics cards that are like the 4060 Ti 16 gigabyte definitely deserve to be shit on, okay? They are bad products, but overall, I personally uh, wish that we were getting good products instead. Love to be excited about products rather than being frustrated or desensitized to what's going on in the market. I want good stuff. And that's that's why we hate on this stuff is because we we actually we actually love it. You know what I mean? So uh, let me know what you think about that, and that's all I got for you. Peace.